Today, uh, no thank you, I do need to get on. We will focus on the overarching principles of the Bill and where we think amendments are needed, but tomorrow we want to focus on the practical progress that needs to be slotted into the Bill um, to support economic, economic activity, building a bridge from today's technology and expertise to future priorities. And we believe the fact that we are now in a recession makes this all the more important. There is a need to incentivise local authorities and businesses to rethink their day-to-day -day approaches. You can see from the briefings from Scottish and Southern Energy and from the Renewables briefing and from the contributions of the business community to our Stage 1 evidence debates that companies are already beginning to focus on serious action and they need to see amendments at Stage 2 of this Bill. There are practical amendments on energy efficiency, on small-scale renewables that will strengthen this Bill and will strengthen the ability of this Government and future Governments to deliver on carbon reductions. It can be seen right across specific sectors where we need to get carbon reductions. And if we're going to make the Climate Change Bill work, it has to be a bill that the business community, that trade unions and communities buy into. That's why we are so committed to developing green jobs, not just the renewables industry, although we think it's hugely important, but other industries as well. There are opportunities with public transport investment, support for electric cars and other vehicles, energy efficiency in our building industry, both in new developments and the need to build mass markets to retrofit our existing inefficient infrastructure. So we need not just to talk a good game, we need the specific legislation on the statute books and it needs to be implemented. And public duties need to be more effective. We need climate change action at every level of government. What, for example, will the Concordat actually deliver on climate change? That needs to be addressed. What are the carbon emissions that will be at reductions that will be achieved? Each local authority will rightly have different challenges and different opportunities, but there are huge common areas where a common approach and clear leadership will actually deliver results. And we don't need vague aspirational language. We need concrete results. So there's more work that needs to be done. I've already taken a couple of interventions. I'd like to move on. There are particular issues that need to be explored, and I very much would like to have a look at the comments made by John Swinney after the debate today about the, the nature of the advice given to ministers. We do think that the UK committee has been absolutely crucial in terms of setting the UK government framework, which this government is now clearly adopting, and in translating IPPC findings into action. But we also need to look at particular Scottish challenges as the result of our geography, our land, our communities. We also need a land use strategy so that we can plan for the future and make sure we address those challenges head on and not ignore them until it's too late. We particularly need to tackle our housing. There's a raft of practical actions still not in the bill and there have been some um, minor comments in the response to the Stage 1 report which we would certainly welcome. We'd like to see more action by the government. Tax incentives in particular we see as crucial and our view is shared by companies such as Scottish and Southern, Scottish Gas, to make sure that people act. And we think this will link into energy efficiency action that we all supported in the budget this year. We need to make sure we have area-based action, but action that every single citizen across Scotland can benefit from. 67 local authorities in England and Wales are now doing this work. Northern Ireland are bringing a system into place. And we, we don't need to be told the Scottish Government don't legally have the power to act. This bill is where we can actually give that power to act. I'm just quoting from the, I'm quoting from the paper we got from the Scottish Government last night. This bill is an opportunity to fix that gap in legislation and give, our, give ourselves the power to act. That's why we will look to amend the bill at stage two. We need to use practical policies now if we're going to actually deliver on energy efficiency and we cannot let political prejudice stand in the way of clear action that's being adopted across the whole of the UK. And council tax incentives would fit very well with the other work we believe that the SNP government is now undertaking. We support the early production of an energy efficiency action plan. It has been delayed for years. Yours is not the first government to delay that action plan, but it needs to be brought forward soon. And I'm not making an excessively party political point. We need to make sure energy efficiency gets to the top of the agenda, not just for one debate, but actually uh, for the future, and we need to do it within six months. Uh, we all agree, I think, that aviation and shipping is one of the toughest issues that we need to address, and I think the challenge to us is that while we cannot turn the clock back on social aspiration and economic progress, we absolutely have to find ways to take aviation into account. We need to take shipping into account too. And it's vital that we um, don't ignore other forms of transport. 
day-to-day -day fundamental choices are available to people and they're not being given the high quality public transport choices, particularly in areas where it could be delivered that are needed. And that's where we need to bring in cumulative emissions and tougher targets to drive early action on those issues where it will be relatively straightforward for government to act. We had major investment in public transport in the first eight years of this Parliament, which Labour championed. That needs to be continued at the same level over the whole lifetime of this Parliament. Finally, we are inevitably going to focus on meeting targets, but we need to involve people and businesses and communities and churches and trade unions and schools. All of us should feel part of this process because there is an appetite for change. This bill will be a framework for action. It cannot be a question of passing something and putting it on the statute book and the government and even the parliament patting itself on the back for being radical. We now need an implementation plan that needs to be discussed through the stage two process of the bill. We need to concentrate minds, but we need to actually deliver policies that will create a lower uh, track to ensure that we have a low carbon society. I agree with the Cabinet Secretary that the next Scottish budget must be more ambitious. We will need not just dedicated schemes for energy efficiency and individual community schemes, welcome though they are, we will need mainstream government expenditure to actually engage with the climate change challenge. We will need mainstream government expenditure to look at how carbon emissions will be reduced. And we're still waiting for some of the assessments to take place at the Scottish level to enable a public debate on that. The power of the state is crucial, whether it's national or local. It's potentially huge in, in enabling our economy to make the transition to a low carbon economy. And public procurement, whether it's food or buildings or infrastructure or services, is a practical way for government to deliver greenhouse gas reductions in the early years, not in the later years. And we believe the government should use a hiatus called by the lack of investment while we wait for the Scottish Futures Trust or public-private partnerships. We need to use this time to reconfigure contracts so that the next generation of public transport investment, the next generation of buildings investment is greener, is more energy efficient and actually delivers carbon reductions from day one, not from the future. So the challenge is in front of all of us. We believe that it's time for the SNP to implement some of their forgotten manifesto pledges that would help reduce carbon emissions. When new schools are built, they all need to be heated and powered by renewable energy on site. And the same should go for hospitals and public sector buildings. So we need a bill that's in place. We need the targets to drive action. We need the governance structures and the accountability mechanisms in this parliament and in the wider public agenda. And we also need to make sure that it's matched by policy development, by measures that will actually deliver carbon reductions. We've seen a robust debate already in our communities on this must bill. Conclude. It's a landmark bill. It needs significant amendment at stage two. I therefore move the amendment in my name.